Hey, it's Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. So it's been a little while since I put out a video and I wanted to catch everybody up on what's been going on. So I spent a couple of days in Honolulu, Hawaii with Quantum University doing a neurofeedback conference and then I went to Stanford to do a virtual and augmented reality innovation lab. Got a lot of really cool videos. Those will be coming out soon. But today I wanted to talk about something that just came out a couple of weeks ago, which is Muse Connect. So Muse Connect, I think, is a one-of-a-kind program. It really does something that I've been talking about for a couple of years now, which is democratize medicine. So what we're seeing in society is a lot of different industries being disrupted. You're getting disruption of the uh, taxi industry by Uber. Uh, you know, Amazon took down book stores for the most part. You know, Netflix took out movie rental stores. These different industries are being changed by the way that uh, exponential technology and the internet is influencing our lives. Okay, so what we're seeing is the democratization of medicine and for the first time ever neurofeedback is being democratized. It used to be that you had to go to a clinic, you know, sit down with a provider, they would guide you as they got the feedback on your brain waves and it would be a whole process but now for the first time ever you can take home a headset, meditate on your own and have the brain waves be, uh, you know, put back to your provider and they can guide you from week to week on what's going on. So Muse Connect just came out a couple of weeks ago. I'm gonna show you guys a tutorial on it. I think it's super awesome. Let's just go to the video now and uh, check it out. When you get Muse Connect, this is going to be the login screen. So you can log in through Google, you can log in through the password that you've done. And then once you get in, this is the Muse Connect dashboard. This is what you're gonna see when you log in as a provider. As you can see, it's very nicely laid out. You can see the active clients. You can see some numbers that give you percentages. They have nice bar graphs in order to allow you to visualize what's going on with your panel. Uh, the login information says PD Paul, and that's because I'm using the Quantum University Muse Connect account right now. It was pretty cool when I demoed the Muse Connect at uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, in my talk about personal EEG devices. Uh, what I did is when I got there, they had five coaches that were gonna help me on breakout sessions, and we had them meditate with the Muse for a couple of days before the conference so that we could go over their brainwave data with the students and show how they're progressing just within those first couple of days. Now as a provider, you would have your clients meditating over a number of weeks and then you would see the progression there. But this actually turned out to be a pretty good demo because there were some improvements already within a couple of days, especially in some of the clients. Now the reason why it says zero active days this week is because they're using demo headsets that Muse had supplied so they might not necessarily have those headsets anymore and since it's been a little over a week since the conference they haven't had any new data streaming into this account. But as you can see with active clients, uh, I have five total active clients. You know, it says zero for these last seven days but it would be higher if you had an active uh, account with people actively using the headsets. And as you can see that within the last 30 days, 100% did sessions, and that reflects um, when the conference actually was. And then you get some other numbers that include the average number of days per week that your clients are meditating, and then how many minutes per day that they're meditating. And you can see they've got a nice bar graph here for daily, weekly, uh, monthly, how much everybody is meditating. You can see which uh, clients had recent activity. This uh, big shifts in the week, um, they're all negative right now because in the last couple of days they haven't had any meditative sessions, but uh, before it had positive, they would be on the right side of the graph here going in the positive range because since they had just started meditating, it was more than the previous week. And here you can see I have some pending client invitations, so not all coaches were able to participate. So basically what happened is I sent out requests in order to get them to uh, share their data with me. And the way that you do that is they have this plus button below the client list, and that comes down with a window that says invite clients. So what you would do is enter the email address of your client, it sends them an email, and then they agree to share their brainwave data with you as the provider. And that's what you would do with your clients. They would take the headsets home, they'd be doing their homework throughout the week when you're actually not seeing them, and then when they come back, you can talk about, about their brainwave data and then you know, define goals, talk about how they were able to uh, apply mindfulness throughout their life from week to week, and et cetera. And there's some really good resources that I'll show you guys that Muse has laid out, a lot of which came from Michael DeCare and some of the other providers that have been doing this in the clinic to uh, strategize and formulate your treatment plan. Uh, they have a little advertisement here in case you want to buy any other headsets for your practice. As you can see, it's a lower price uh, through Muse Connect because you already have a um, professional relationship with them. 
Um, you can see who's recently accepted. And then they have this thing called the Practitioner's Guidebook, and I'll go through that in a upcoming video, but they have like so many good resources in order to show you um, what people have done by using this Muse Connect so that you can formulate either how you want to do your practice with, me, with Muse or um, you know your own personal development in uh, using Muse if you're not a provider. And what I'll show you guys real quick here are the resources through Muse. Um, this is incredible. They really uh, laid out this practitioner's guidebook that talks about explaining using Muse to patients, explaining what meditation is to patients. Uh, scientific benefits of meditation, getting started with the Muse, how to use it, how to introduce it to your clients. They've got the Michael DeCare webinar on there that was very helpful. You know, I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago, and that was very enlightening. So there, you got those resources there, and you can actually see my interviews here with uh, Michael DeCare on the clinical side of using Muse, but then also with Graham Moffat on the actual science of how these devices work, how they've been developed, and what the scientific validity behind them is. They've got several other webinars from other providers that have been using Muse in their practice. And that is just like an invaluable resource that they've got going through Muse Connect. So getting back to actually looking at the data, looking through uh, the clients, um, Shelly did some really good sessions. So you can see what it would tell you is how many days in the past seven days she's meditated. You can see all that on the past 30 days because it has been within a month that I did the conference with them. And you can see her activity, what days that she meditated, what days of the month. And you can see her individual sessions, which is the coolest part. So basically her first session she did for three minutes and she had 11 recoveries and four birds. Those are the main metrics that we're going to use. But then you also you can see the different ratios of calm, neutral, and active. Now remember, Muse isn't using the typical frequency breakdown of neurofeedback that we've used in the past for neurofeedback. You know, taking a complex EEG signal, putting it through mathematical analysis, and breaking it down into delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma waves. That's not um, what they're doing. They've gotten more sophisticated, and most neurofeedback companies have gotten more sophisticated with that by taking the complex EEG signal, defining primary, secondary, third, tertiary characteristics, putting it through AI and machine learning, and then using those smart programs in order to better classify what these signals are corresponding to a, a specific mental state that you're in. So they really simplified it down into these different categories. They call them calm, neutral, and active. Calm is when you're in that meditative state, you're in that sweet spot. Neutral is you're not quite in that sweet spot, but you're not getting too distracted as well. But active, you're getting distracted. And the core paradigm that Muse tried to develop is the attention on the breath. So with um, one type of mindfulness meditation, you're focusing your attention on the breath. And every time that your mind wanders from the breath, maybe you get distracted by an external stimuli like someone walking by or some kind of noise or an internal stimuli which is, would be like a thought or maybe like even worries that come up for you, you're going to lose attention on the breath. And basically what happens there is that the algorithm detects that you've gone into the active state of mind and you need to get back down into neutral or calm. And every time you redirect your attention, basically you're going from an active down to either neutral or calm. And every one of those spikes that goes into active is a recovery. And one of the paradigms of this, one of the paradigms that Michael DeCare was talking about in our interview, is that the recoveries are actually good. This is tracking the fact that you're losing attention from the breath and having to bring it back to the breath. And that is what is really building those neuroplasticity pathways in your brain in order to help you better focus on not only your breath, but being more aware of where your mind is going and what, how your body feels. And this manifests itself in your everyday life. So the recoveries are actually good. You want probably going to see a lot of recoveries in people's initial sessions because they're not able to focus as well. And birds are when they've been in the calm state for five seconds straight. So if you get in that calm state, you start hearing the birds and they're actually meant as both a reward and a distraction because if you're in that meditative state, you get excited that you hear the birds and you say, oh my gosh, the birds are here, but then they flutter off. And uh, that actually is the challenge with this Muse program is that what you're trying to do is get those birds, but as soon as you hear them, maintaining that calm meditative state so that they stay around and don't fly off. So in 
Shelly's first session, she had 11 recoveries and four birds, which was a great example of uh, probably what the first couple of sessions will look like. And what you'll notice is the very next session, she, she really quickly narrowed down her ability to get into that mindfulness state because as you see, the number of birds went up and the number of recoveries go down. And I think that she's been meditating for so some time so that she was able to do that a lot uh, more quickly than maybe some other people uh, are able to do. But as you can see, She's a lot more focused on the breath for longer periods of time within this three minute session than um, the previous session. So that was a good demonstration. But of course, you have to use trends. You shouldn't be using session by session. You should really have either if you're doing this yourself or if your clients are doing it, take a look at what's happening week to week. Really, it's not about individual sessions, how well you do it, did. It's really, it's establishing that habit of doing it every day and looking at general trends over the week. So, for example, the next one, she didn't do quite as well. Um, she only got two birds and, and got four recoveries. She was more in that neutral state. So maybe something was distracting her more on this session. I think that she actually said that her husband was up walking around, that, which distracted her during that session. But what you should be doing as a provider is um, having people do three to five minute sessions for the first week and have them get used to it. And then the second week, kick it up to, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, and Shelly kind of automatically did that over a couple of days. She knew she could feel that, uh, you know, she was get, getting good with the three minute session. So she kicked it up to five minutes. And even in the first five minute one, she knocked it out of the park. She was really in a calm state for an extended period of time, got 37 birds, didn't even need any recoveries. But again, we're looking at general trends here for the next session. She, uh, you know, had 13 birds and six recoveries. And uh, then she kicked it up to seven minutes, and this was a more challenging session for her. Um, she had 18 birds, but then she also had 18 recoveries. She was getting distracted a lot. And again, the recoveries are good. This, we know that this is building that attentional loop back to the breath, which will help in other types of therapy as well and in everyday life. So this is the progression that you should be looking at, whether you are training yourself in Muse or whether you're uh, you know, training clients in Muse is Every week, increasing the amount of minutes for uh, meditation and likely what that's going to cause is more recoveries than birds because you, you're getting more distracted over a period of time. And then as you get better and better, you're going to have more and more birds and less and less recoveries. And at that point, the idea is that you need to be kicking up the amount of meditative time per session to challenge the person even more. And again, not worried about session by session, but more like weekly trends and uh, incorporating the meditation habit and applying mindfulness to everyday life. So this is the Muse Connect program. And as you can see, the power is really the ability to have multiple clients doing these meditative practices on their own. And then you as the provider being able to see what everybody's up to. This increases compliance. This really makes it fun between provider and uh, client. And this uh, really establishes the habit of meditation for them, which is uh, one of the most difficult things to do for a provider is to get your clients to get into these type of practices so that they can be meditating and will make all the other types of treatment that much easier. You know, meditation has so many scientific benefits, as you can see in the Muse Learn and, you know, just a regular Google search, you can see how beneficial meditation is for people. So I'll be go, going through the practitioner's guidebook in another video, but that was a short uh, discourse on Muse Connect so you could get a quick look at it. I think Muse has done a great job in getting into that niche of meditation and what providers need for it. And you can have a uh, phone call with them to discuss different ways of doing it. And you can see all the features here. You know, they've got the uh, the treatment, the introducing the Muse to clients, treatment progress, uh, how you should be doing it from week to week. They have this eight-week protocol. And then they have the prices, you know. And this is something that I think Muse is doing in order to you know, provide the great service that they've been doing. And uh, you have a lot of benefits to doing the subscriber plan. Again, I don't have any financial relationships with Muse. I just think that what they're doing is great. And this is why I'm doing videos on what they're doing. I'll have more videos on other types of personal EEG devices coming out soon, but I hope you enjoyed this Muse Connect talk. If you have any questions, leave them below or email me at hello at techforsych.com. This is Dr. Cody Rawl. Talk to you again next time soon.